businesses across the country are struggling to find employees, uh, with many people choosing not to work because of the Biden administration's extra unemployment benefits. Some fast food restaurants are adding perks to lure in workers, like McDonald's, for example. It announced it's offering tuition and child care. Subway CEO John Chintzy joins me now to talk more about what he's seeing. And, John, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Can you give us your assessment in terms of what you're seeing at Subway restaurants right now? First, let's talk employees. Do you have trouble finding workers? Sure. I mean, it, it's a tough environment, as you said out there, Maria. Um, I mean, I think for not just the QSR industry, but across, you know, lots of different industries. And so um, Subway's always had programs where we've worked to uh, help employees with education, other programs like that. But in addition, as part of our big refresh campaign, which I know we're going to talk about our biggest uh, product relaunch, if you will, in the history of the brand, we knew we were going to need a lot of positions. So we announced in May um, a, a digital app um, push for, for new employees, if you will, and went after an extra 40,000 employees. So on the margin, is it tough? Yes. But if you really go after it and, and are creative, there are ways to definitely get people um, back in restaurants. The other advantage I should throw out that, that we have vis-a-vis yeah. -vis a lot of our competitors is just because we're smaller, unlike some of our larger competitors, um, you know, it's a less of a labor issue for us than some of our, you know, other people in, let's say, FFHR. Yeah, but, you know, you got ahead of this with that digital push, looking for workers uh, months before it actually became the issue that it is today. Let me ask you about business in general. What are you seeing out there? You know, for us, it's been unbelievably strong, which is, I think, a testament to what we've been able to accomplish in this turnaround since since we arrived, you know, because we don't have drive throughs like a McDonald's or, or a Burger King. But despite that, for the first six months of this year, you know, 75 percent of our system is positive over 2019. You know, you've got that bottom quartile in downtown locations or places like Washington, D.C. that are tough. But the vast majority of our system uh, is positive. And even in the second quarter, the entire system on average was positive. So the last three months have been incredibly strong, even despite that bottom quartile. So for us, business has been very strong. And then obviously starting this refresh campaign today, which will also be our biggest advertising uh, program in the history of the brand as well. I hope we're just sort of adding gas to the fire and that will really accelerate sales. That is awesome. A lot of investment in this refresh. Tell us about the refresh. Sure. You know, one of the things we heard from consumers when we got here um, as a team was when we did a lot of our consumer research, and we heard it from our franchisees as well, is they were really desperate for food innovation. We hadn't had a lot of food innovation within the brand. Uh, consumers or guests told us they were looking for more craveable food as well. So we've spent the last 15 to 16 months, because obviously in a restaurant chain of our size, you can't do it overnight. Um, we've gone back and really upgraded the quality of most of our core products. So whether it's better tuna, better uh, better tuna, better ham, uh, better turkey, better bread, uh, smashed avocado, just a whole assortment of new sandwiches and new core products. Um, I, and I think it's worth saying, since I mentioned the tuna word, tuna is the one thing we didn't touch um, because that was a product that our consumers loved. Um, and so, you know, and that obviously predated the, the story. So everything else really we touched, but the tuna we left alone because consumers loved it. So tell me about the controversy around tuna, a lawsuit alleging uh, that there's no tuna in, in the actual tuna sandwich. The company is being sued over whether its tuna actually contains any of the fish at all. The New York Times had a sample tested, and the lab results showed that there was no tuna DNA present. One expert claiming that it's likely an assembly line byproduct, John. Subway just launched a website defending the sandwich. You've got the floor. Tell us about that tuna sandwich. I'm very glad you asked, Maria. Um, no, it's 100 percent tuna. We stick by that. Actually, a couple of facts. One, if you go back and look at the lawsuit, they've now amended their filing and they say, OK, we agree it is 100 percent tuna. Uh, can you prove if it's albacore or skipjack? Yes, we can. But that's really a side issue. Um, we put the subwaytunafacts.com out there so you can actually go follow the science. I tell people just follow the science. Um, and I think, you know, if you follow the science, once tuna is cooked, uh, its DNA becomes denatured, which means you can't tell uh, once the product's been cooked. And I, even the New York Times said that in their article. So, again, I'm a big guy that believes in science. And I think that subwaytunafacts.com lays it all out there very well. And we 100 percent stand behind our tuna. As I said, it's the one ingredient we didn't even touch in the largest brand refresh in the history of this brand.
So this largest rebrand, refresh that you are doing at Subway, John, does that mean we're going to see higher prices? We're waiting this morning on the Consumer Price Index. We will get a read on inflation at the consumer level. But we know that many of the underlying products to make uh, food uh, have gone up in price. Are you passing that on to the consumer, John? Well, first and foremost, when we did this refresh, uh, when we, you know, dreamed up what we needed to do months and months ago, that, that was obviously pre-COVID and before a lot of these supply chain issues. So we looked at it as obviously when you have higher quality items, they're going to cost you a bit more. So we worked to look at other things we could take out of our supply chain, whether it was, you know, making changes, tweaks, whatever you want to call it, to our packaging or other things we could do to help offset that cost. So we were pretty successful in basically offsetting all of that for them. Then when this uh, inflationary pressures you just discussed came along, Obviously, we all face that that problem in the industry, and you know we're continuing to work with ways to try to mitigate as much as possible. But obviously, as you say, you know, depending on how persistent and how strong it is, sure, some of that is ultimately going to have to get passed along to the consumer. But I think it's too early for us to tell really how much impact that will have. Now you got a lot going on at Subway, John. Real quick before you go, what's your favorite sandwich? What should we take away from this big refresh in terms of the best product at Subway? I, I would have to say I love this new Turkey Cali Fresh, which, by the way, we're giving away a million six-inch subs today. So I would encourage people, uh, it's between 10 and 12 o'clock, I would encourage people to go out and try it. I think it's a phenomenally great product. So I'd go for that one. Hey, good plug there. John, good to see you this morning. Thank you so much. Best wishes on the refresh. John Chinsey joining us this morning. See you at Subway. Thank you, John. We will see you soon. Thank you, Maria.